So yeah, in this one we're gonna do some awesome custom lighting, which is just going to be a recreation of how your general lighting works. When you're using UDK, whenever you just plug your stuff into diffuse and emissive and everything like normal and spec, what's going on under the hood? Do you know? Or don't you? What Whatever it is, we're gonna find out right now. So the first thing that you wanna do whenever you create a custom lighting setup, you have to uh, set this one the lighting mode to uh, custom that way you'll, you'll have an access to you know the light vectors and everything and i mean the most simple thing that we can do for custom lighting is just display our diffuse so if we grab this plug this in there you go you have your very basic lighting which is completely ignorant of any light direction so it's not really lighting but you're just displaying your you know your diffuse texture which is good enough good enough but let's say you want to do something more let's say you want to have some lighting in here well the first thing that we'll need to do we're going to have to grab our dot product because that way we'll be able to calculate the relationships between our surface normals and a light source but before we do that let's just grab the three constant vectors we usually do get ourselves some normal going like a surface normal and then we just transform this from tangent space to world space so that way we have two vectors now we have an upwards pointing world vector which is this because we transformed this to world so we only have z positive and a, a surface normal which is this which we talked about in the previous chapter so right now if you plug this in ta-da Whatever is pointing upwards, yeah, and there's some sort of residue lighting going on. I have no idea what it is, but it sort of fades out in the distance. So, yeah, that's better. But what did we forget here? Yeah, we're going to use a constant clamp. We forgot a constant clamp here. Because our dot product is going into negative value. So when we're going to do that now, it's going to be all nice and tidy. And let's just preview that stuff just for now. Are not even preview, but you know what? That's just like sort of the basic idea that we'll have. And yeah, we can preview it. I actually made a little setup that will help us sort of <laughs> see it better. But anyway, here's our uh, sphere that is basically lit like that. We're receiving light just from the top because we just said that we do like hard coded it into the shader. So this is our arrow, which represents the surface normal over here. Up top, I lifted it a bit, you know, and you'll see why in a sec. But you see that only the top is lit because it's sort of the light is coming in from the top. And you see the light vector here, it's actually white because now it, we just show how much light it sort of bring us, brings us when it points in that particular direction. So if we were to uh, place it over here, just a sec of the origins of this one, and rotate it, you'd see the difference. You see that immediately as we make it, you know, perpendicular to this vector, it goes black because this is how much light it carries for this uh, sort of pixel. This is what we've done right now. So as we get closer in direction in the angle to the... Uh, this point uh, up here, we we carry more light, and that's basically it. So turn away, less light, you know. And that's all we did at this point. We're just uh, comparing the two vectors and how it works. And I mean, the weirdest thing is that we actually just do a dot product of, uh, well, yeah, now yeah, we, we're now we're gonna go into the actual light vector because this is something that you obviously need to know if you want to have your life set up. And let me just stop the preview here. So yeah, you want to calculate something better and more realistic lighting, get yourself a light vector. And UDK provides you just that. There we go. So we grab our vector over here and we just plug it in instead of the world space vector. And right now, just let me uh, show it to you. Uh, there you go. There's our little nice lit sphere. And you know what? Let me just remove the constant clamp so you'll probably see some artifacting, which you don't. And it's good, but I thought you should. Anyway, so now as I click 
L and start rotating my light source in the preview window here in the material editor, you see that the light is actually moving. We are not hard coding it at this point. We're using real light. And it has to be said that it is an approximation because say, uh, what I mean by an approximation is that there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood that we still uh, don't really like uh, comprehend here. And for example, imagine a situation where you have uh, 10 diff different light sources that are affecting your single pixel. How's that gonna work? And UDK does that sort of pre-calculation for you. It just creates an average light direction and intensity for you to work with. And this is actually kind of nice, but on the other hand, it, it is sort of a limitation because you can't really sort of address every single light source that affects your pixel. And this could actually come in handy and uh, it is really visible at places, but I'm gonna talk about it a bit later. But right now it's just, really nice to, you know, like there's something that is sort of, <laughs> I carried over from the programming background when you're having uh, some sort of problems, you know, having trouble in order to make sense in all of it, you just pretend to be uh, like some sort of number or like, uh, you know, whatever it is uh, that is going through your program and just what happens with it. The, the same thing here, it's just, it's nice to know that stuff because you can know what happens with the pixel on every stage and every module here. Uh, so yeah, right now we just create our light vector and now uh, the simplest thing, how do we combine those two? Well, light can both darken and brighten, it depends on the light vector intensity. But at this point, let's just uh, not think about light intensity, but just multiply those guys. And you'll see that right now we'll get the very basic per vertex lighting that games have been living with since forever, basically since the earliest days that lighting was actually introduced. Well, I mean, ah, for dynamic lighting, obviously, because usually it was pre-baked. But anyway, so this is as simple as that. Just those two, like two lines of code actually describe a whole generation of how video games and real-time graphics were rendered. <laughs> but here's something that is even I don't, a bazillion times more impressive, is you remember that huge quality gap that happened when the normal maps got introduced in the sort of, what was it, seventh generation of consoles and, well, the PCs that the were there at that time? And the thing is called normal maps. <laughs> and I, I mean, it still fascinates me how simple it is and like all genius things, it is definitely uh, simple. So yeah, a normal map basically represents a normal, not just per pixel as we have it here, but just uh, not just per vertex, but per pixel. That's the thing that it, it's just as simple as that. You replace a per vertex normal with per pixel, you get per pixel lighting and you get way, way more detail, incredibly more complex visuals by just replacing, you know, as you've seen, just, you know, your sort of local normal with a, a map that stores the, 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 the surface normals for you. And that's it. You see how much more complexity you gain right away. <laughs> and I mean, just, you see, we just sort of replace one little, well, one little thing with another, and we've got ourselves a whole new generation of video game graphics. <laughs> this is fascinating. So right now, uh, we might want to, you know, comment it out because this is basically uh, all we have. This is our lighting. And you know what? Lighting is actually here. It's even smaller because over there, we're actually uh, sort of transferring it over to our albedo, to our diffuse texture. So let's keep it separate, I guess. We have our lighting. Let's actually comment this as a diffuse. And now, now that we got that nailed down, what else do we want to do? I think we want to do some specular highlights because apart from diffuse, a normal spec is generally like the standard for your materials. And it's not that hard either. I actually created a little something uh, for you guys to help you understand it a bit better. But before we go into that little schematic that I did, Here's just a little uh, th thought for you. I mean, as you see here, as I rotate my camera, lighting stays the same. It's independent from the camera vector or the point of view. And this is actually the biggest difference between 
uh, just your regular lighting and your specular lighting or your specular highlight because those are merely reflections of your light sources on the surface that you're viewing. So if it is a reflection, it changes with the angle that you're viewing it at. And for that, I actually have a little something to show you guys. There you go. You see, I actually, at first it was like a very, very boring schematic, but then I saw to just go ahead and, you know, pimp it. So now it's like totally badass. I know that you're definitely digging it. So anyway, uh, here's our, uh, yeah, my bad. Here's our little uh, schematic. Here's our circle. Here's our red is our vertex normal or pixel normal, whatever it is. And the green is just the light, the direction the light is coming from. And the thing is that the reflection vector is the vector that your camera is reflecting from uh, the surface, basically. So this is what we define as a reflection vector. And we actually going to use that because basically that whenever the reflection vector sort of aligns itself with the light vector, then we're getting the most brightest and the most intense uh, specular highlight. It's as simple as that. Whenever we are looking straight, you know, like data dead on to the reflection of the of a light source of a bright, very, very bright light source, then we're getting our specular reflection. So now if we go back to UDK, we actually get into creating that stuff. So, I mean, it's not that hard because reflection vector is actually here for our convenience. So all we have to do is just create another dot product. And once we do that, uh, a dot product with the light vector, obviously, and let's just lower it a bit and let's just try to preview it. Let's see what we've got. This doesn't look uh, like very, I don't know, understandable like what it is is it a is it a spec highlight doesn't look like it so far but one thing that you can notice right now which is very important it is view angle dependent you can see that it changes depending on the camera position that you have which means that we're halfway there so when you know, remember whenever we're making a dot product we want a constant clamp back because we don't want any negative values in there but now just in order to sort of make it more reminiscent of the classical specular highlight that you used to see, let's just crank up the contrast. We remember that the power node just cranks up the contrast. So let's get ourselves a constant and let's just, you know, uh, use the power uh, of three, just multiply it by itself three times to see how our specular highlight will look now. Hey, what do you know? This looks way more familiar. And now as I'm rotating my light source, it also rotates. And as I'm rotating my point of view, it also rotates. So <laughs> this is great. And you know what? This is actually called the width of your highlight. It is uh, this little thing over here. That's your specular power. That's your glossness. This is how you control. This is how the engine controls uh, the glossness. This, uh, let me just call it uh, spec power here or glossness. I mean, those two terms are interchangeable. You can probably hear me just calling it one thing or the other just because here it's in UDK spec power, but I'm usually used to saying glossness and I'm not really sure what's right. So, I mean, just choose what you like more. But as you can see, uh, yeah, this, that, that, that's it. That's the only thing that's going on here. It's just a little simple input, but it is pretty amazing. So at this point, do you want to make it more complex? This is like an obvious question. And in case you do, you can also use a map as simple as it gets. This is our texture sample and how we sort of apply it to our spec uh, highlight that we have up to this point, we multiply it so that the places that we don't want to catch the spec highlight don't. And once we plug it in to our custom lighting here to preview, there you go. This is our specular highlight with our map well and now uh and this is actually something i don't know if you ever practiced it by yourself but whenever you're looking at an object that has some sort of a spec specular property to it try to sort of notice you know how it works because there is like a lot to be revealed just by the spec qualities of an object like some paint flakes or brush strokes you know like on painting surfaces is pretty obvious and stuff like that 
And it's very interesting that spec, uh, specular highlight usually only adds brightness to the surface from the angle that you're looking at it. So you can't really darken it, you know, with a spec highlight. So that means that in order to represent it like properly, we're just going to use an add node here. So if here we're adding lighting, like uh, the diffuse plus light lighting. Oh, I suck at spelling. I'm sorry, guys. So yeah, you just plug it in here and here. So this is just, you know, add synthesis spec. Okay. Spec. And then you just plug it in. And our spec is really, really not that intense. But you can see that there is something going on, which is cool. But at this point, we probably want to make it more intense. And how do we do that? Well, yeah, I've got a solution for you. Let's just go create a constant three vector, convert it to a parameter, because you usually, especially if you're using grayscale uh, for a spec, you want to color it somehow. Let's, so let's just call it spec color and use alpha for intensity. And I just messed it up. Okay, spec color and use alpha for intensity. There you go. And yeah, let's make it some sort of a bluish kind of cyanish kind of color because it usually looks nice. And for the intensity, let's just crank it up all the way to like five or maybe even more. Let's make it 13. You know what? Let's just go all the way. <laughs> so now, yeah, the only thing left is now to just multiply those two. So we carry them in sort of a single uh stream well whatever you want to call it just like a sim single number and then we'll just multiply our spec map with that stuff and we'll multiply our diffuse and there you go you have your kind of nice colorish the too bright and unrealistic spec going on but at least it's visible for you guys that was sort of my main concern at this point and yeah, this is how you check out your spec. And now you probably, uh, you know what, let's just do something like that. And to arrange everything, you know, make it nice. Uh, call this spec for specular, lower this little thingy. And now uh, if, we're if we were making an actual material, what you'd want to do is create a, a coordinate, texture coordinate. So yeah, this is just the uh, the UV coordinates that we're using. We just want to, want to, you know, plug those in into all the textures that we're using. So we might as well just tile this stuff. And that way we just create like a fully functional, realistic material that we can preview and see all the nice details and spec and the normal. It's, it just took us like 15 minutes with all the explanations to recreate all this technology that's going on, you know, under the hood of your usual shaders. I mean, this is, uh, I don't know. It's just, I, I think that it's incredibly, incredibly useful to know because it's just super simple. There's nothing too complicated about it, but now you have like a complete picture of what's going on with your pixels when you plug them in here and you're capable of, you know, if you have to, at some point, just intercept what's going on in between those nodes and sort of adjust them and transform them whatever way you like and, you know, get very specific results. You can just bend it to your will, which is always nice when you're, uh, you know, you're supposed to be the master of your own domain, of your skill, if you want to put it that way. So, yeah, I hope you guys find found this fun and useful and I'll see you guys in the next chapter. Yeah, take it easy.